Hello and welcome to another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. I'm the player who plays as the King Under the Mountain and today I'm just going to do a brief season update video. Uh, I am going to keep it to around 10-12 minutes I think today. Just to show where the server's up to, uh, how much has changed actually in the last few days. Um, and kind of go from there really and probably show a couple of fights as we always do and, and kind of work away. Work away through things. So... Uh, as always, I will start with the leaderboards. The map has changed a little bit, not in colour, but it has changed. So, um, as you can see, we're now 10th. This is more because I've been replacing tiles elsewhere, which I'll probably touch on that as a key point by the end of the video, really, because I think it's important to keep your production up. Um, from a Fellowship production point of view, we've dropped by about 200k, so no spoiler alert which, uh, which Fellowships have been taking a pound in. And in contribution, we're still in third behind Ogre and Raven. Uh, we've pulled the gap away a little bit more, trying to catch up with Ogre a little bit, which we've done the last couple of days, but I don't think we'll catch him overall. Uh, as for the map, I will try and explain uh, what's gone on. So we currently still own the ring. We don't have a single tile anywhere near the ring, to be fair. Um, and there's kind of like a border and tiles being dropped here for what looks like, I believe, a ring war that's coming at some stage. And I'll probably touch on that at the end because I'd be interested to see people's comments on, on what they felt about that, really. Um, so there's been a little bit of discussion about which lines over here they've got. So we've been pushed completely out of Dol Goldor. And then uh, both teams, Gods and Yudes, also entered the Undeeps, which was fair enough. You know, it, it's obvious that the, there is a very much an allied 2v1 currently, and I think they've been quite open about that. So we are now quite far into the Undeeps, below the Keep, with, uh, with both of them building a fortress to take the Undeeps. I think they've got about seven or eight hours left uh, before one of them can attack the Undeep. So they're both making a fortress here. Uh, it is very much a sort of allied 2v1 to, to get us out of the middle ground, which I think was always going to happen, to be honest, once we took the ring. Um, the day of the season itself is day 36. So all that's happened in the last four days. Uh, we are at a crossing currently down here, where there's quite a lot, I think it's gods who are attacking us at the moment. And we've been defending for a little period of time. Uh, as for the pins, they've been pretty big. Um, it's This pin's kind of moved around a little bit, it was obviously up there and around, but we've, we've been kind of top of this pin for, I think it's actually been going for five or six days, it was at about 35 million at one stage. Um, but as resources come sort of down, the ability to fight becomes a little bit less, which is why I think it's important that you rotate resources. And that's kind of going to be my first point of today, is never have all your resources in uh, in one area. So without kind of going too far into that, there is always 150s, 130s, particularly at this stage of the season, somewhere if you've got this many lands never focus them all on one area and never really and truthfully if you can help it in something that's going to be a combat zone so these lands here are pretty safe for us for an example and all these lands here are pretty safe for you these lands here are pretty safe for gods so your, your main production should probably be in there as for the rest of your production and i get you can't always get what you want from production wise probably shouldn't be in these areas and if they are you just need to spread it out so at the moment, I'm taking 150s within our own lands just to keep my production high. I've also got a few tiles spared to tile if we need to tile. Um, and that's kind of where, where we're up to really with that. So I just wanted to show just a few uh, few reports as well, just while I'm here. <clears throat> and we'll start hopefully from the top. Because we've kind of been fighting, like I say, gods and you. It is very much an allied 2v1 now that I think, uh, even though there's not been any official word directly through leadership channels, it's become quite apparent. And the fact that a ring war has been decided, uh, which is a strange one, I think, for a free-for-all server, but hey-ho. Um, so this was a decent fight. 
HGH World is a uh, is a really good player, really strong. Again, we're taking advantage here of the fact that we've got the ring buff, and also we've been fighting in our own land. So we are lucky. We we have got quite a significant buff, but HGH World gear is is out of this world. To be fair, let alone HGH World. I was using up some troops here that I'd converted uh, just to keep myself in troops, to be honest. Uh, this is the guy who's still number one in the server for production. Be interested to see where he's at actually in um, a really nice Dane again as well. Uh, where he's at in regards to Merit, because I think he does fight a lot and he uses two formations. So this is his main. But um, he tends to stack them up on two tiles, and if you get through one, you certainly aren't getting through the other. So even his sort of B team is uh, really impressive with some full refined uniques. <laughs> um, and an old school girl with some 1.0 gear, which is nice. A really nice shadow. Um, so yeah, so he's got a couple of really nice formations. So I'd be interested to see where he's at in the merit list for, for you, to be honest. Um, this guy again, really strong. Again, I was using up some converted troops. These are the forty tower guard mod mob troops that we're kind of going through. Um, again, we have been fortunate because we've had the ring buff for a very long time, so it's allowed results like this to happen uh, against you know even units that counter you. To be honest, Gibby's always a good solid fight. Again, really strong. Clearly came from evil side um, before switching to NRP. Always nice to see a battle Saruman because I think that realistically he's he's pretty strong as Saruman considering. I don't think you need a great deal of respect into him to make him strong. Uh, this guy's also strong. I think this was actually attacking my keep the other day because I, I was defending that for a while. Uh, his Dane's better than my Dane, I would suggest. His Saruman's better than my Saruman. Uh, his Gandalf the White's pretty well geared and does a little bit of siege. <laughs> um... And Bjorn's also nice, to be honest. He's got a lot of Palantir, so again, not sure which side he came from, but maybe got lucky with his rolls. Again, I mean, it's a pretty clear, a pretty solid fight, and I would suggest this is actually a loss to me, even though I've got a little bit left. I would never get through the draw. Um, but it just shows you what you what you can achieve when you've got the ring buff and things, so it's nice. Finally, after all season of trying, uh, this was when uh, I was defending my base the other day, um, which I think I did for about five or six hours. But anyway, um, Vanilla always hits hard. It's a great formation. This is the closest I've come to actually getting a result against him. I mean, I'm not saying this is a result, by the way, but this is the closest I've come. Resource-wide, it's not bad a trade, but um, he's definitely winning the fight. However, normally I was losing to, say, 2K, so that worked out right in the end. Again, this guy... Really strong, and this is actually the first time I beat him this season as well. I have tweaked a couple of my skills just to uh, see if this kind of helped, and it, it did in this fight. Um, but again, really, really strong, using Cav. I mean, Z5 Gimli. <laughs> um, so again, another good result. Again, another great player. It comes from evil side. I, I know I normally uh, beat him. But to be fair, he's got a really nice formation. It's just it's just off meta. That's all it is uh, against uh, the the Dane Bjorn formation. Um, but yeah, really strong, really good gear. So that was another solid fight. This is just picking out the best of a good bunch. As always, we'll go back to Robin five one Robin. You keep trying though, bless you. And then we've got Gooch. Gooch is one of those fantastically trolly people who's actually all right if you uh, if you get to know him a little bit. Got a great formation, but um, uses a lot of cav, uses a lot of 1.0 gear. I don't know if he used Sauron last season, actually. I don't know if Sauron's new to him, because uh, he was in only last season. Um, but yeah, I wasn't quite full, so from a resource trade point of view, that was quite good. And that was just to prove he had a fight yesterday, because some people were questioning that fact. <coughs> 
always lose to space moon this is the main account i think yeah so this one's at level 50 the other one this guy's actually got three accounts all pretty wailed out um but this is one that's actually at level 50 and it hits very hard uh, to say the least then you've got raging uh we tend to do okay against this guy apart from when he runs cav then it's a lot closer But I mean, there isn't really a lot of youths in general that you can hit and, and you're not hitting some level of whale. Um, this is Odin, who I believe is one of the leaders of gods, I think. Who again has got a really nice formation. Not too sure on the weapon on Gandalf the White, if I'm honest. Um, be a really good stuff. Nice formation. Zhao the Prophet, as we like to call him, uh, really talks really highly about 2.0. Um, but incredibly strong player. And uh, and also fights a lot. I'd be interested to see where uh, where they are in, in relation to the merit list, because I think they're, they're always on the battlefield. This guy was actually Yud's number one. Um... And it's more through activity than necessarily his, his gear. His gear is very, very good, but in comparison to some of the other huge guys, it's uh, it's not as good. But he was number one for a long period of time. I don't know if he still is, uh, but that's more through activity. Always like to beat a girl, particularly a girl with swans. Again, nice gear. Um, but this was kind of like just another one of those fights where I, I probably should win out in this fight, particularly... Uh, without a damage accessory on, on Bjorn. Finally got some success against Suna. This was all still while I was defending my base the other day, I think. And Suna, oh, it's like he hits surprisingly hard, which always makes me think that he, he's obviously uh, geared himself very well. But nice to see. Beats a lot of players. Um, does Suna. I think this is the same person as before, yeah. Might even be the same fight, actually. I might drop this in by accident. Again, I would have lost that draw. I think that is the same fight. Uh, Loop is always a good fight. Another pretty decent whale. One of uh, Ill's better players, to be honest. Uh, really nice skills. C11 Sauron. I always think that Sauron's just a bit of a waste at high respect levels, because... For all the attacking skills that he's got, very rare he does a decent amount of damage. Um, but yeah, his, his Dane's really nice, and his Bjorn's really nice. I think that's probably just for the set effect, to be honest. Don't know why I dropped this in here. I think this was more just to show that we were still fighting over this fight. I think this was a good fight, actually. I was quite surprised by this, because I was kind of at half health. And from a gear standpoint, um, pretty good, really. So again, this is the ring buff power, I, I, I would say, more than anything else. Um, allowing these kind of results, really. And then this is one from 10, 20 minutes ago, I think. I haven't seen this guy for a few days. I think he plays a couple of formations, and they are also pretty wailed. This is his main formation. Um... But yeah, pretty wild. Always nice to see someone with great gear. Uses, obviously, some troops to try and increase his speed. So he hits first, but we won out in that fight. We we won't do once we haven't got the ring anymore, I wouldn't say. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're, we're being really hammered at the crossing now. I'll probably just guard for a minute. And I suspect I will die. But we're basically just trying to hold as best we can. Uh, we could probably do some time, really, to uh, to actually grow some troops. Dwarves are uh, dying faster than at Moria, currently. But I think we've took out both armies there. Uh, I'm running out of stamina, I think, today anyway. But if I just have a look here. Yeah, so we just took out a couple there. Uh, this guy is also really strong, by the way. At the moment, I tend to overturn this fight, uh, but it looks like he's using some converted troops. Looks like that's the axe for a 40 mob, I guess. I think they come with Bjornins, which is interesting on Bjorn, I guess. 
Um, quite a clever way of converting, actually. I hadn't thought about it that way. And then we've just uh, just cleaned this up as well. So we are trying to defend as best we can. Uh, we are getting pushed back. It is two kingdoms versus one. Um, and I suppose my last point was, and I guess, again, this comes back to people and, you know, it's kind of a... How do people feel about it? If something is... I know it's been spoke about a little bit on fellow streams as well. If something is a free-for-all with the rules as, as they are and, and sort of presets before seasons... Should there be a ring war? Um, and I guess I'm not too sure on that. For me, probably not, because it's not really a free-for-all if you then have an arranged fight for the ring. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to hear people's thoughts on that. However, uh, as always, that's pretty much all I've got time for today. I just wanted to do a little update. We will lose the Undeeps, I suspect, today and the ring in a few days' time. Uh, but we don't plan on stopping fighting. I think it's been a really fun season. Um, where we've probably learned a lot more about ourselves than we realised and, and sort of the strength that we have within the team and what our strengths are because we we have been pushed this season by two very quality kingdoms. Um, Illil in particular, to be honest, have been the team that have probably impressed more than anyone else just, just due to pure activity. Um, they kind of have a four or five hour spur a day where they are just on it and they literally just throw everything at you for four or five hours. They may not be the strongest team in the server, and I think they would openly admit that. But from an activity standpoint, for those four or five hours in the middle of the day, it's uh, it's crazy, really. But yeah, on, on that point then, that's pretty much everything for today. Um, really enjoyable season, still 19-ish days left. Um hopefully we can turn it around and we will regroup it's it's hard when you're getting uprooted from a territory because you all end up kind of cut off from each other for a few days so we're just starting to move back um to try to defend but as always if in doubt always follow your nose